So my background that's relevant, um, when I left university, I had no idea what I wanted to do at all. Um, and my first job was in an adolescent unit for disturbed adolescents. And I think it was a really important background, actually. It taught me about mental health. It taught me about mental disturbance. It taught me that things don't have to stay as they are, that real fundamental mental health problems can be put right. And I think that is kind of in where I've got to in my work, that stayed there. So I left that and went into further education. So from FE I went into a ex national exam board where you and I met and you sat on one of the committees I ran to design new qualifications for teachers and trainers. Um, and I got so I'd already been a section leader in FE and in the exam board I became the head of department. There were only two large departments and I headed one up. So I got huge leadership experience, um, which I actually found terrifying and daunting and a lot of the time miserable as hell. And I think that's been part of my background in doing this. I loved being a staff member. A lot of the time I absolutely hated being a leader. Mm -hmm. had no training, no support. There was nothing like coaching. The organisation I was in restructured, relocated, went through terrible times and we were just persecuted as leaders. So that comes into this very much as well. At some point in my career I decided, I'd gone from further education and exam board into, I, at some point I went into staff training and, and I loved that but I was always skimming the surface and that related to my experience as a leader as well that everything seemed to, all the courses I went on seemed to skim the surface. Mm. So I wanted to do something that took me further so I did a master's degree at the Tavistock and that was about consulting to organisations using a psychoanalytic approach and systems thinking, open systems thinking. Um, now that's what I brought into this, although I've developed it a long way. I worked for the Tavistock for a while and then I set up Working Well, my company now. And I'd been independent for a long time before that, but that's when I really changed the way I worked. Because it makes such a difference to people in the workplace at all levels. Mm. So I was working already with boards, with leaders, senior and middle, and with staff at all different levels. Mm. And what I found made a huge difference was actually getting under the surface to what makes people tick. Why do we behave as we do? Why are our buttons pushed as they are in the workplace? So really trying to delve into things. Why does the system do what it does? Why do some people react in one way and others react in a completely different way? So those were the concepts for me. But after I left the Tavistock, I started really developing my own way of thinking and my own way of applying them, I suppose. And what I felt very passionate about and still do is that psychoanalysis is kept very much in the shadows you know how many people outside our little world even have heard of the Tavistock how many people in the mainstream of the world of work think about using psychoanalysis or systems thinking maybe systems thinking a bit more but psychoanalysis no way so my passion was to bring it out of the shadows into the mainstream because I am absolutely convinced that if done in the right way and talked about in the right way, it can be incredibly helpful to people. And I actually think this project has shown that. The themes were um, really key themes to our psyche and what makes us tick and how we are. So they were love, aggression, persecution, loss, attachment, presence, and the one that freaks everybody is Oedipus. Um, that people say, what? They think you're going to talk about 
sleeping with your mother <laughs> and they run a mile. Um, and they came because, as I say, they're key to who we are. They're absolutely core psychoanalytic concepts. I didn't learn about them at the Tapestock, um, but I learned about them through my, my own mm. analysis, being in psychoanalysis as a patient myself, mm. and my reading since. And I then, at some point, I suddenly had this brilliant idea of putting on seminars for leaders with no, no psychological background mm. at all. And these are the ones that you're talking about that were slightly strange. Mm. And I developed, I designed this seminar program called the What's It Got To Do With It series. And it was, what has psychoanalysis got to do with leadership? And that was, you know, aggression, what's it got to do with leadership? Mm. Love, what's it got to do with leadership? Mm. And people came from all sorts of places um, HMRC, amazingly, came to that. Um, that's good news. That's good news. They phoned me up and left a message saying it's HMRC calling, and of oh. course I panicked, <laughs> <laughs> but they wanted a place on the seminars. Um, the Body Shop, mm -hmm. British Library, mm -hmm. all sorts of places came to that. Um, British Library sent their head of digital, who came to the seminar on love, had mm -hmm. never heard of me, mm -hmm. never heard of working well, came to the seminar on love of all things, mm -hmm. and then said, oh, I'm coming to them all now. Yeah. Came to every single one. The Body Shop then hosted the next series mm -hmm. of seminars and sent one of their staff to every seminar. Mm -hmm. So that, it was those two series of seminars that I replicated for this programme, but then customised in terms of FE, and we made them then workshops rather than seminars. The seminars were three hours after work. People mm. could come to one or all, however many they wanted. This was a group that committed to them all. And we did a whole day so we could do the seminar part in the morning and then really in the afternoon think about the application to people's own jobs in colleges, in training organisations.